The following video contains spoilers. We suggest watching the episodes alone in the dark. Greetings, Wolf Pack. The season of fear is upon us, and it seems Goosebumps is haunting everyone's minds, thanks to the upcoming reboot miniseries. So guess that means we should celebrate too, with a marathon of spicy critiques on our legendary children's classic. <laughs> I may be trapped in a haunted house, but even Thundercatter can't ruin our Halloween treats. That's what you think. So, after gathering a large, large request pile the size of Lizzo's butt, we should kick off our gallery show with a look at the fan favorite, the blob that ate everyone. Oh no! Oh! Storytime kitties, The Blob That Ate Everyone is undoubtedly a noteworthy title among R.L. Stein's vast collection, showcases some of the best Jacobus art and imagery in the series, serves as a nice love letter to the old school blob horror flicks, and has garnered a sizable audience who adore the story as another fun gem in the saga. However, I don't like it. You son of a- I have never loved this episode, and actually don't have too many fond memories of it like others. In fact, I disliked this episode so much that I only ever saw it once as a kitten and never again until I was forced to for this review. I distanced myself from it like the plague. I think I'm gonna be sick. Yeah, no sugarcoating from this candy cat, kids. I never liked the Blob episode or book, and it shall be my victim. Fortunately, I do try to be fair, and will give this episode a fair shot to prove me wrong as we go over it on this riff view. I won't deny the Blob is an iconic monster for RL series, and was the strongest element of the novel, literally being so big it was old. Stein's kaiju level boss. The big reason why the novel was so admired is because of the epic badass monster. It was a truly terrifying abomination, which wrecked cities, withstood any attack, nearly destroyed the world, and as the title says, ate everyone in its path. This title was so famous that even The Simpsons referenced it. It ate Patrick too? It ate everybody. What about Erica? It, it ate, ate everybody, everybody, stupid! Now that sounds bossa nova and makes prime horror meat. What's the problem? Well, Goosebumps the TV series was going to try to adapt one of Stein's most outlandish, ginormous-sized fables on a show which had less moolah than the Power Rangers. Oh! I don't think I'm being cruel or shocking anyone when I tell you Goosebumps the TV series was a painfully low-budget, cheesy B-movie style kids program which had some goofy as heck effects, lousy child acting, campy insanity, and struggles trying to turn R.L. Stein's larger-than-life visions into an accurate representation. Make no mistake, I still love Goosebumps, but I'm aware enough to see the limits. The Blob That Ate Everyone is tragically one of the worst examples of the show's weak production values, and how laughably bad it could get. Though in all honesty, I have heard some fans do enjoy this for what it is. The Blob has many episode fans who do appreciate it as the show staff did try their best with what they had. The campy quality did amuse, and despite compressing big novel events, is pretty close enough to the book. However, there's an equal amount of haters, like me, who just can't see past the lameness to call it good, and know that even this show can do better. So yeah, there's some fans who adore it, and some who blow it off completely, making this a more mixed episode between us Goose fans. So there may be some light in winning my heart. I hope 
a chance. There are a lot of big differences from the book. Some obvious, but some reasonable, such as compressing major events for the runtime and altering some of the bad elements in the character writing. If you're hoping for me to call out how unfaithful it is to the source material, well, let me save you some time and admit that it's not. The episode maintains the plot structure, narrative events, and key scenes from the book, yet it is a loose adaptation. Since the show singes away all filler and makes it flow under a half hour, over dragging it out like the book does. Personally, I'm fine with it, because I hate the book! Judas! Sorry, Goose fans, but Book Blob's another one of Stein's slow burn, dull waiting games, which does not get fun until the Blob arrives halfway in. But on some fun trivia, this episode was actually completed earlier than expected. Originally, the Blob episode was planned to be the season 3 premiere, to give the kids a literal big one to get them excited for new Goosebumps. However, the crew surprisingly completed it ahead of schedule so it was given an early release for season two. The bet was a mistake. I can understand wanting to appease fans with more Goosebumps delight, but after watching this episode, it only makes things worse. Them releasing it early tells you that they were proud of this one, folks. The crew thought it was so good that they didn't need more time to develop it further or make any fixes. They truly believed it was great enough to premiere before Night of the Living Dummy 3. Uh Oh. If that doesn't excite your hype, then let's dive right in to see if it was worth it. The Blob is popular enough to stand next to Slappy and the Horrors, so did his tail do him justice? Am I wrong and this is actually an underrated gem? Did the showrunners fill those kaiju-sized expectations, or did their Blob fizzle away in the sewers? Let's stop typing my words and find out. Grab your magic type typewriters, because we've got some stuff to say about this one. This is our wacky review on the iconic monster fable, The Blob That Ate Everyone. So, our episode opens up with two radical kids cleaning house, introducing us to our main characters, a sassy girl named Alex, and our dorky leading man, Zack. Zack! Zack! He's a psychomaniac! In the novel, the homeboy's name was actually Zack E, but the show shortens it to just Zack because that is totally extreme 90s, bruh. And Zack is most gnarly. What you see is what you get. While sorting things, the duo find a secret box, but it doesn't contain normal secret string. <gasps> They're just worms. Wrong story, dingus. Man, the Goosebumps crew must have loved Go Eat Worms a lot, since so many later episodes keep referencing it, or have the leftovers from that film, which includes some evil Muppet worms as well, since they attack Zack. Only psych, it was all a classic Stein fakeout, and really Zack sharing his amateur scary novel with his besties. The real Alex and Adam. Yeah, I call it Adventure of the Blob Monster. It's awesome. If you ask me, it was lame. Adam is a dick. In the book, Adam was a blatantly unlikable idiot bully who, for some reason, Zack hung around with, which always pissed me off because the kid was an absolute douche who trolled the author a lot. Total toxic friendship. The show tones him down slightly as more of an obnoxious baby brat, most likely to make viewers hate him less. But don't worry, folks. He's still the worst character of the story. Think you're ready for Revenge of the Gator people? <laughs> Kitty section's over there. Doosh. 
I really despise Adam because he's so hittable, and for some bizarre reason, the main characters chill with him, even though he's a prick. Which is a terrible message to send kids. But he's only made so much worse thanks to additional garbage child acting. That's weird. No way I'm falling for a dumb old story like that. I'm so emotional right now. Won't lie, the child acting is laughably bad. Aside from Adam being unlikable, Zack and Alex are no better. Alex has all her scenes trimmed down, so her personality is simply the girl. But Zack has it just as bad, as in the novel, he was supposed to be a self-insert author avatar of R.L. Stein himself. Yes, really, Zacky was based on R.L. Stein. He seeks to be a famous horror writer, loves monsters, can crack a joke or two at others, and had some of Stein's personality traits. Unfortunately, the show purges most of that and made TV Zack super boring and uninteresting as a Goosebumps hero. The only thing that makes him like Stein is his love for spooky stories, and that's about it. All his character moments are now either deleted or glossed over, making him a rather forgettable, generic kid hero. Thank goodness this kid had better luck playing zombie dice, cause he deserved a winning hand. It's so depressing that the rare protagonist, based on R.L. Stein himself, utterly falls flat, and is not even a fraction as cool as Carly Beth or Jack Black. Could you keep it down? I'm trying to be boring. I'm sad to say that none of the kids are very likable, interesting, or even fun. But hey, at least we have the blob to look forward to, right? Right? Hey, what happened? Lightning. You know, during the big storm yesterday? Doc Brown really needs to clean up his experiments. While walking home questioning his skills, the kids find a burnt shop where, of course, they have to check it out, even with how creepy it is. <laughs> Well, that's inviting. They check the wreck, where Zack stumbles upon an eerie typewriter, free with its own electricity. <laughs> Chill, Spidey, he's fine. No, really, he blows off being static shocked and gets back to normal. See, kids, playing with live wires is totally safe. Zack takes the static typewriter, thinking it'll inspire him to write books the old-fashioned way, only to get jump-scared by a magical black lady. He likes writing scary stories. I'd certainly write a scary story about my store. I spent ten years and all my life savings now... this. Spoiler alert, this magical black lady is 100% pointless. Really, this ominous shopkeeper shows up out of nowhere, acts all sketchy and weird, only to just give the typewriter away to Zack anyway, even though he was already going to take it because he thought the shop was abandoned after the stormy destruction. She could have been deleted entirely, and this scene would play out the exact same way. The first time I ever watched this, I thought the creepy lady was going to be a major character or show up later as like a supernatural expert with knowledge on the magic or how to kill the blob in the darkest hour, like the mask maker. But nope, she simply disappears. This character pops up out of nowhere, says nothing vital, does nothing vital, and adds nothing vital to this whole story. She doesn't even tease if the typewriter's magic or not. She is completely meaningless. Well, that was pointless. It's always a good sign of writing when you have a useless character wasting screen time, overusing it to benefit the grander arc. So yeah, she gives him the typewriter he was planning to steal from a broken dump, and I guess her African crap teases magic. That's racist. So we're at last on our way with the character arc of Zack becoming a great writer with his retro typewriter. But alas, it's not as easy as it looks. Reader beware, you're in for a skip. Nah. Yeah, that's the stupid schmaltz you'd hear on a campy TV show. 
Again, these are attempts to show us how Zack is an R.L. Stein stand-in, but he's just so boring, bland, and his arc sadly gets shuffled off aside in favor of focusing more on the cheap scares and build-up towards the blob. I don't hate Zack, like Adam, but I just don't find him very engaging or even memorable. He's simply not very deep like Carly Beth, O'Connor, or even the bickering Stebsibs, Gretchen, and Clark. As his story story is not fleshed out like other protagonists, because the show wants to be more scary and unsettling with a big wig monster, which is only made worse because the episode is a slow burn fuse leading us up to the blob for far too long. As Zacky drafts, we get our big reveal. The typewriter is magic, because whatever is written on it happens in real life bringing some supernatural shenanigans to reality. A cool concept for sure, but really held back by some lackluster scares. Who's there? This is so weird. I can't believe it was only Dad walking around in our family home. Yeah, the kids are kind of stupid. So stupid that it takes them a few years to realize something's up with the device. Zack writes out his scary story, where with each passing sentence, they slowly take notice. He summons a dark stormy night, ghostly winds, abnormal events, and even spooky noises. It's almost some decent atmosphere, yet the kids look so dumb as it takes Zack forever to figure it out, even when he writes them home alone in the dark with Dad randomly vanishing. You wrote about the storm, and the storm started. And then you wrote about the wind, and the wind began to howl. And now you wrote the world alone. You're nuts. It's just coincidence. Not the dumbest kids we've ever followed, but this tale takes way too long setting up the typewriter over our kaiju monster. Well... We're waiting. Zack refuses to believe in any ghosts, while Alex is aware something's amiss, forcing them to test it out. We admittedly get a decent spooky scene, where Zack types up a scary knock on the door, where something arrives for them. Unlike the still idiot, he actually looks outside, only to find nobody there. Yep, something's knocking that they cannot see, as Zack hasn't written what it is yet. It truly is a cool freaky moment, but after some dread and heavy build-up, they see... nothing. You know what would have been scarier than nothing? What? Anything! Wow, are you happy, kids? The creepiest scene without the blob in it, and they grant us Jack Squat! A nearly decent fake-out, but it does make the kids know things are growing supernatural. Zack is still uncertain, so he types up that Adam visits, where, lo and behold, Adam arrives. <laughs> Oh golly gee willikers, he's back! And don't worry, he's still awful. Did you stand on the front porch before you knocked? I guess. I was trying to remember why I came over. God, put some fucking emotion into it. The episode just doubles in bad quality the longer the kids are in focus. The cast just sucks at acting, share no chemistry, and hog way too much screen time over the monster. We want to see the dang blob, but he's still not here, and we're only given more scenes of the kids exchanging lame banter. Everything he types out, it comes true. That's weird. No way I'm falling for a dumb old story like that. I don't know why we have to prove something to a kid in cowboy pajamas. <laughs> You know, Adam really sucks as a bully. Even though Zack acts like he's the cool kid, Adam acts Homer stupid, sleeps with a teddy in cowboy PJs, and is easily picked on by his big kid pals. Have you guys both lost it? Why are these people friends again? Uh, stupid? For some dumbass reason, the two tell Adam about the magic and show off the machine when they end the storm, where Dipwad Brat trolls them by typing up a spooky blob in the house and ditching them. The blob monster hid in Zack's basement, waiting for fresh meat. What a Now I have to retype the whole story. Doosh! 
Whoa, I can't believe telling the class dickhead about our magic power would get us betrayed. Uh, stupid? But, oh no, they hear spookiness afoot. Can it be? How you guys doing? Still okay? <laughs> Only dear old dad again. Again. They did the stupid jump scare with the dad twice. I bet you kids were all hoping it was the blob, but nah, we love wasting your time. I look like a jackass. The duo asked dad if he's seen something strange in the neighborhood, but nope, he hasn't. Did you see anything strange down there? Nothing unusual. Hey folks, have you noticed something missing in this monster story? The mother <laughs> blob! Where is he? I'm not even kidding when I warn you, the blob is barely in this. For realsies, I haven't been editing out clips or holding off on showing him yet. The blob is barely in his own story. We are nearly done with this episode, and the blob has yet to even show a tentacle on screen. Well, that's because the show makes the brilliant decision to save the blob for the final act. Yeah, the episode I think tries to pull the Jaws effect, you know, build up towards the big reveal of our humongous foe and its ultimate rampage. But that does not work when your monster doesn't even exist yet. We waste so much time on annoying hijinks with kids who can't act, tedious fakeouts and jump scares, and explaining the typewriter than showing off the main selling point, the frickin' monster. A part of my reason reasons for hating this episode is because it is so slow and waiting for the blob takes forever. It's horribly paced and knows it can't afford the monster effects, so it wastes a ton of time doing nothing, which hurts to sit through. Because these boring scenes go on longer than my penis. <laughs> bet that everyone, especially the kids, are growing tired of waiting for this mon. Oh, but finally, the kids do try to play things safe and search the pad for any ghoulies, where after spotting something scary, we see it's only Adam being a prick. Yeah, real funny, Adam. You should be on stage. You really think so? Yeah, the one that leaves at noon. <laughs> You're pushing your luck, show. And just like that, they blow off the haunted nonsense and Zack gets back to typing his magnum opus, forming his real blob tail. The blob monster attacks the video store in the mall. Everyone's screaming, trying to run away, but they can't and the blob eats everyone. But if that doesn't excite you, he invites his girlfriend to dinner and rents a blockbuster video. <laughs> Ho oh, ho, does the riveting emptiness in this monster tale ever cease? To be fair, the novel had an equal amount of fluff as well, but it did grant Zack and Alex fun, quirky character moments that made you more invested in them. Unfortunately, while the episode successfully moves at a faster speed, nothing interesting is happening. We're entering the final countdown, and the scariest part in this whole arc is a knock at the door. Be afraid, kids. Zack bumps into that scary meanie Adam, who acts like a vastly different 
different character now. He somehow goes from this baby brat into the tough guy bully with his own bros, taunting the rider with his gang, which also amounts to nada. On a small note, in the book, Adam's two pals were actually a pair of girls, who he was likely trying to impress by acting cool, but for no given reason, they were changed to boys. Or maybe they're boys who identify as girls? <laughs> It's another stupid, pointless change, which does jack but remind you Adam's still here, even though we wish he wasn't. But suddenly, something occurs when the store is attacked. Jeez, calm down guys. I didn't think the X-Files movie was that bad. It turns out this isn't panic over more Fox crap, but finally leading us to the blob. So, after all this buildup, all this dread, and the long wait, we at last get our awesome baddie. <laughs> What the? Are you kidding me? Holy <coughs> Jeebus! <coughs> Christmas! <coughs> How did my life? <coughs> That's the blob? This is our big bad epic frightmare of a beast? This is the creature Goosebumps fans praise as a horrific Godzilla-sized monstrosity and Slappy's OP minion? This is awful! Finally, we reach the death nail in this episode's coffin and why I have always hated this title. The Blob sucks! This thing is lame to the max! In the book, the Blob was one of the most gruesome boss level threats big time. It looks like this in the story, and it was not only an unstoppable force of nature, but an utterly ruthless doomsday villain. It was big, it was all wiggly, and it ate everything! That's horrible! <laughs> I think it goes without saying that many viewers were ultra let down by this because the blob is a joke, nothing like its book version. On the page, it was this pink gooey living liquid that kept expanding the more it ate people and absorbed so much power that it was capable of destroying the world. However, the episode turned it into a literal piece of crap. This isn't a toxic mutant abomination like the 80s blob. This is the live action version of Mr. Krabs' appetizer. It is so, so bad. The blob that ate everyone was already a very impossible task for the show to capture on the big screen, but the end results of this great poo tell me that they bit off way more than they can chew. The blob looks fake as hell thanks to its rejected Muppet body, its foam rubber teeth and skin, the off color the cheap recycled Go Eat Worms appendages, and how it's very janky the way it moves, as if the actors puppeting it can't get it to run. Abysmal work. I can't believe it was greenlit. Just to add some extra salt in the wound, this thing arrives after so much buildup, heavy anticipation, and even with the show staff thinking it was ready to go, but this was our big bang. <laughs> The blob is so fake looking, so poorly designed, so lame that it's laughably bad and annihilates this title completely for me. I'm shocked some fans found this okay, since even as a kitten, I knew it looked fake and my friends and I ridiculed it. The blob is X-Men Origins Wolverine Deadpool bad. <laughs> 
Yeah, I said it. This is the equivalent of the mouth sewn shut garbage dead poo bad. I hate it that much. Oh, but it gets better. Not only is the blob a poop monster, but it's only in its own episode for the last five minutes. For five minutes! Yes, no joke, the blob, who all you kids wasted half an hour to see, is only in his own episode in the final act of a few minutes. And even then, he's only shown in glimpses because he's too expensive for the filmmakers to keep realistic in all that time. So, not only is our main villain faker than Kim Kardashian's lips, but he's only around in a few scenes of his own horror story. This is why I and many fans hate the blob that ate everyone, because the monster is literally a giant disappointment. But we got a plot to finish. The blob is on a rampage, where Adam shows up to stupidly poke at it. <laughs> and he dies. <laughs> Silly rabbit, tricks are for kids. Who cares? Screw Adam, he sucks on the page and screen. But if you crave extra disappointment tonight, in the novel, the blob literally eats multiple people, including cops and civilians in his way. But the cheapskates only limit it to solely Adam. The show nerfs the blob, as he was so OP he ate the police. It ate their hats. It ate the spatula. It ate all the Krabby Patties. It ate the stove. It ate old man Jenkins. I don't want to be a burden. Yes, the blob that ate everyone doesn't eat everyone. I dare call it an epic fail. So, right as soon as the blob shows up, we quickly get the most rushed climax I've ever seen on this show. So please, Wolfpack, try and bear with me here, because so much stuff happens in a few seconds that I explain it better than the show does in its flash time. Zack dashes home at last realizing it's all real, where he and Alex figure out they can defeat it by finishing the story. However, the blob won't allow that. <laughs> it's out there! Good thing it's right outside where we can't see it to save our money. This is truly a sight to behold! Oh, I wish I had a camcorder! Alas, the blob comes for them, as they very slowly plot their ending, only to stop when blob eats the typewriter. <gasps> Look out behind you, lady! It's the blob! I'll save you! But very randomly out of nowhere, Zack realizes that the typewriter was never magic at all. It was him. Zack is the power. When the kid was struck by lightning from that old machine, it actually gave him superpowers. The ability to create anything his mind conjures. And it was him who made all his written events a reality the entire time. Stretch it! Yeah, what a character arc. He pulls the solution out of thin air. So, Zaki uses bad effects to erase the blob. Again, these look like doggy do. How did the same saga which gave us Mr. Mortman and Slappy make this junk? Oh, and that's it. For real, that is it. Zack defeats the blob, the monsters Thanos snapped after a mild rampage at Block Bleister, the kids win, and Adam lives. <laughs> it then just ends. Just like that, the monster's anticlimatically dead, and we get an everyone laughs ending. It's so awkward and abrupt that you feel nothing. This brings us to the biggest change from the novel, the ending. Because in the book, they actually had a big twist. After the kids slay the demon, we learn that the entire Goosebumps tale was actually a novel being written by the blob. What? 
the real world is actually a universe of monsters, and the Blob wrote this tale to pursue his own dreams of being a writer, where his friends tell him his book sucks, and he alters the ending to the Blob killing everyone. It was a bizarre meta-joke ending, which Stein inserted to throw everything into question and play up the goofier side of Goosebumps. Sadly, the show omitted this whole twist because they couldn't afford to pull it off and thought it was too silly. Believe it or not, the writers actually kind of did adapt this unused ending as the twist for One Day at Horrorland, where the world of monsters are actually watching a Goosebumps episode before turning it off because it's too scary. And even the Haunting Hours brush with madness sort of did this too, but in a much darker lens as it leans more towards towards cosmic terror. I think both those episodes pulled the ending off much better, but tragically, that ending being saved on other horrors does not save it here. Removing the ending was a bad move, because not only is it unfaithful to the story, but the writers replace it with nothing, resulting in this very awkward, abrupt conclusion which is mega unsatisfying. I get that pulling off the infamous writer's blob twist might have been too hard for the producers, yet by not giving a solid ending at all only makes the episode suck even more because you feel nothing for it. I do! I have the power! What power? Forget it. You, you wouldn't, wouldn't understand. understand. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking television! Anywho, that's Stein's Showa, the blob that ate everyone. More like the bomb that failed everyone, because that frickin' blew chunks. This episode sucks. I'm genuinely shocked how this title isn't on more worst episodes lists, because this is such a dull, boring, lame, cringy letdown. I always skipped this episode as a youngling. At first, I thought it was because I found it too scary, but no, it was the opposite. This was the tale where nothing happens. I legit fail to understand how anyone out of kindergarten enjoys this, when it's a monster story that barely has the monster. While waiting for the dang blob to show up, it's so boring, slow, unfunny, colorless, and lazy to sit through. The child acting sucks. There's so many scary moments that don't scare. The suspense is severely lacking. Screw Adam. And the typewriter hogs so much focus. The show staff clearly had little confidence in their monster, so the episode stretches out the narrative with so much fluff and fake outs that aren't very good. Two thirds of the Blob's episode doesn't even have the Blob involved and is slow burn padding which wastes time until the monster finally arrives in the final five minutes of a half hour adventure. And when we finally do get the Blob it sucks. I always hated this thing as a kid because he is not even close to his book counterpart's awesomeness or badassery. It's made a thousand times worse after all that waiting and build up because the monster of our nightmares looks like poop. This Muppet is barely on screen, not even a tad frightening, not cool, and worst of all looks painfully fake. This legit might make my top 10 worst Goosebumps monsters. He is a disgrace to the novel blob. And don't say, oh cat, it's just for kids, don't be so hard. Let me just ask, who the hell do you think is going to be the most pissed that their favorite childhood monster in this kid's series? Series doesn't accurately resemble their childhood book. Hello, kids are going to be the most upset at how much this thing sucks, and always point out when the adaptation fails at lookalikes. The fact that the showrunners went out of their way to release this title earlier, over reshooting it to mend the flaws, only makes me hate it even more because they approved it all. I think it goes without saying that the blob was done stronger justice on the goose 
Goosebumps movie, because they at least saved the Blob's dignity by making him a badass final boss. <laughs> the Blob, our titular monster being so bad, sealed this entire tale as bad for me, because we were all here for the creature's rampage, waiting to see a kick-ass kaiju on a killing spree, and instead got this. I'm going to throw my shit at you. This is dreadful. The show failed to deliver on this monster and simply couldn't put their money where their mouth was. After seeing this end result, I honestly wish the show not adapt the blob that ate everyone at all and did something else they could handle because this is a poor adaptation. 90% of the story is just a bunch of dim-witted kids bumming around for minutes on end, unscary fake-outs or lazy jump scares, and dull dialogue that goes nowhere, then the final 10% is a bad effects B-movie that hastily rushes through everything and failed to deliver on the ultimate Goosebumps fun. I hate this episode because it's boring. Nothing occurs for long bouts of time, the child acting is atrocious, the writing's lazy, it's not scary, it's a downgrade of the book, and oh yeah, the blood Bob is barely in it. And even when he is, it's hilariously awful. I held off on discussing this tale for so long because I never liked it back then and still don't like it now. I grant this rough draft a decayed skull and don't recommend at all. This is a big old goose fail. And I think people of all ages are in for a horrendous waste of time. The blob that ate everyone had a huge huge expectations to live up to, but like the terrible Muppet, it was more gas than solid. I'm your host, Catastrophe, and remember, artists, if you ever fear your craft isn't good enough, always remember that even you can create something better than a poo monster. <laughs>